What is going on, guys? My name is Seeds, and welcome to Feeds Mindset, our first ever podcast, first episode with the wonderful man, Life Eats Lemons. Uh, so excited to do this. I'm not exactly sure of a schedule. I don't really know exactly how I'm going to do everything, just kind of something new I'm trying out because I do feel like I have a lot of good mindset and opinions on a lot of topics around the community and stuff in general, and also just kind of highlighting people as well and getting them their little bit of spotlight as well as, you know, me as well if you enjoy my opinions and stuff. Um, so yeah, so today we have Leif. Uh, Leif, I appreciate you being on, man. How's everything going? Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Um, it's been going good. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it, man. Thank you so much for, uh, especially in a timely fashion, you've answered actually pretty quick. I mean, we literally were just talking about this yesterday, and it's already happened. Um, well, yeah. which is crazy. Also, uh, another shout out real quick to uh, to Graphic B. I'll link him in the description for the uh, on- awesome designs that you're seeing right now super quick super reliable so shout out to the man for that because i probably wouldn't be doing this right now if he did not um get that um but anyways let's get into it man so uh so life man tell us um who you are you know what do you what do you do what do you stream yeah so i am life eats lemons so i play a lot of valorant lately i've been dry, like diving in full force into diablo 4 so that has been the entirety of my streaming lately <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm a part-time streamer, but yeah, you know, the goal eventually is to be a full-time streamer. So yeah, yeah, I mean, that's everybody's goal right now. It's it's yeah. the way the world's going, man. It's it's kind of getting there. I mean, there's there's some promising factors in the future. I'm I'm definitely excited for it. Um, so the first question I have for you, man, do you actually eat lemons? <laughs> Does Leif actually I... eat lemons? Dude, okay, <laughs> so. The whole reason why my name is Life Eats Lemons is because I was at home on leave and my buddy, like, he's pretty much family. He just walked into the house. My parents didn't think anything of it because it's like a normal thing because we played football together for like four years at that point. And so it was just normal. And so he just walked in and I just like, I was cooking. I think I was making like some like lemon pepper chicken. I'm pretty sure. And I had a lemon in my hand. I was about to zest it. And then he walked in and I had it in my hand and I looked at it. I looked at him and I threw it at him. I like let the, you know, like the impulsive (laughs) thought, like just take over. So I just, bam, like right in the face. And so he's like, why? (laughs) And I was like, I I don't know. I'm sorry. (laughs) And then after that, he was like, all right, well, you know what you got to do? And I'm like, no, no, I don't, I don't like where this is leading. And he's like, no, you got to eat it. I'm like, all right, fine. So I start peeling it. He's like, no, nah, you got to bite into it. And I'm like, this is awful. And this is not a proportionate response. And so, yeah, then I did it because, you know, I felt bad. Oh, man. How'd that go? How'd it taste? Uh, so it wasn't great. <laughs> I feel like if it were just the lemon, it would be fine. Yeah. But, but you had the crust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the crust. <laughs> I've never heard anyone call a peel a crust, but oh, right, man. Yeah. That's what we call it in the South. Anything that's hard and crunchy to get around, it's called the crust. Fair enough. Oh man. <clears throat> so uh so yeah, so uh obviously uh you talk about how you stream Diablo and stuff. Um I wanna kinda go back a little bit and to gaming in general and kinda like, you know, what what got your start? What got you into gaming? Why did you want to start streaming? Why did you want to build a brand and create something around yourself um to share with others? Uh so for me it was very focused on well, you know, getting started. Like my first game was World at War. I think it was in like I don't even know how old I was, to be completely honest with you. Mm -hmm. But I I played that. I loved it. And then I just kept going with that. Uh, I was awful. (laughs) Like, absolutely (laughs) horrendous. But, you know, over time, I continued playing. And then, you know, once I got into this world, I guess, uh, it's a story that, like, a a lot of people have, really. It's just, like... You know, you see these people, you see how, like, impactful that they have, um, like, for people that are streaming. And you you watch these streamers and you see that you, they have a lot of impact and they yeah. have a lot of, like, viewer, viewer interaction. And you think about just how many people that that streamer has impacted in a positive light. And that's something that I wanted to do. But I, I started seeing things that I, like, didn't necessarily like. 
Yeah. Um, it's not, I'm not like dogging any, on anybody. Sure, or sure. Like that. It's just like, there's a lot of stuff that like, it, it just seemed, there's a lot of people that seem like very, I don't know, disingenuous. Like, right. They're, they're, they're kind of, they're kind of losing what they started it for. Yeah. Like, it, I, I didn't like that. And I didn't like that a lot of these, these spaces and these streams and these communities were being faced with, uh, a lot of controversy all the time, you know? And so I wanted to provide a space that wasn't like that, you know, like you could just come there chill, hang out. Mm -hmm. If you're going through something, I'm okay with, you, you know, talking about it. Like, I don't, I don't believe in like the whole like trauma dumping. Like I can redirect it, you know, like, yeah, obviously if we're just <laughs> sitting on it, that's not great. And I have like discord things. I mean, you've seen it. Um, the homies helping homies channel, like, only two people can be in it and you know if you're really going through it you know pull a friend in there yeah something like that and uh that's kind of my whole focus is like just kind of creating that space where it's like everybody's there for fun and to flip their day around if they're having a hard day and that's that was the whole premise of it that's that's really why i got going with this yeah, I mean that's that's awesome, and you know specifically, you know, with with you being on the first episode, for anybody that doesn't know, Leif is a pretty decently long time friend of mine for well over a year, probably going on to, and me and him for the most part share most of the same opinions for the most part, um, and yeah, I mean that's it's kind of basically you know my whole outlook, which I mean you know everything that I am as a streamer and you know how I hold myself and stuff, and it's very important to not forget why you became a streamer and not forget what kind of impact you're wanting to make. And there is a lot of people not discrediting anybody out there and not calling anybody out, just general statements and maybe even people that don't recognize it. That's not even us like bagging on them and right. saying like, you're not, you know, you're not who you used to be. I, I miss the old feeds. Like not that, but it's like sometimes maybe you're just growing too quick. Maybe you've just got a lot going on. Maybe you, maybe you're just not sure. Maybe you're just streaming as a gateway and stuff and you start to kind of lose that sense of why you started the end. And the thing that stinks about it is like when you talk to somebody, you kind of have to catch yourself when it's when it's kind of quick like that, because if you let it go on for so long, you end up losing friends and, and viewers and genuine connections that you once had before, because you're not realizing that, you know, maybe you're the one that needs to take a step back because, you know, if, if streaming and gaming is getting tough for you, like maybe instead of being the streamer, you should be the viewer. Sometimes it's always good to take a step back yeah. and watch other people and watch other streams and stuff stuff um so yeah i definitely share the same opinion with you it's very very influential for a viewer that's going through a hard time to go into somebody you know i would i would credit myself as being somebody that i would love to, to change their day and change the outcome and stuff i would say the same thing yeah, to you absolutely. um so yeah i definitely feel you were coming from yeah man i mean like i think i think that's such an important thing and i think it's underplayed a lot um a lot of people think and, and view it as a like chore and it's it's really not you know like it, it takes nothing to be kind it, it costs nothing to be kind i mean you're already putting yourself in the spotlight you're already opening yourself up to that <laughs> that possibility so like embrace it you know and, and, and instead of like focusing on like okay this person has a problem they're having a rough time let's focus on that you could really just shift it and just be like hey man we're here, we're not, we're doing this, you know, like, I'm here to help you have a better day. And so you can, like, kind of shift that focus, but not be dismissive at the same time. Like, acknowledging and feeling your feelings is super important, too. Like, it's okay to say, hey, shit, man, this sucks. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm definitely with you and stuff, and I think that is kind of with the the substantial you know generation that we're we're kind of in now and stuff it's like not calling anybody out or trying to offend anybody but it's like it, it's hard for some people to either a acknowledge that they're having a rough time or b just straight out say it and be like man like i'm having a rough time like a lot of people keep it bottled up inside a lot of people complain that they don't have friends and don't have people to reach out to and stuff but at the same time you got to understand like yes there are people that are going through some of the things same things that you're going through but like if you don't 
take that step to talk about it, nobody's going to, you know, talk back and stuff. And that's not saying right. like you should always be the first one to reach out, but if you want connection connections, excuse me, if you want connections, you have to make connections. And you know, it's the same thing with like me and you. Like me and you didn't really know each other aside from, you know, things that happened in the past, but it took yeah. me and you both at different time frames in our life. I've had emotional conversations with you you've had emotional conversations with me you know it takes oh, those steps and those times and be like man like i know that life is probably busy but i really don't want to and i hate saying this but i need to reach out to him because i need somebody to talk to and just getting over that bridge makes a world of difference and people just got to yeah. understand that and then also you got to take into account like yeah if you if you need to if you need to reach out to somebody, it's okay. There's no, there's no shame in that. You know what I mean? Like, and if they're dismissive of it, that's okay too. I mean, like that's on them. If they're not in a bandwidth or like a space to handle that, I mean, the ideal thing is that they let you know, but if they're a little bit dismissive of it or something like that, remember that we're all going through things and we all have stuff going on and they might have a lot on their plate too. And so when something like that happens, I think it's important to to recognize that it's like you offered, you put out that, you know, that handshake. It, it doesn't have to be accepted. It's no slight to not be accepted. But the fact of the matter is, is you took that step and you tried. And that's important. And it's, it's not going to cause drama. It's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if you're having a hard time and you're just like, hey, man, this sucks. I need some help. I need to talk about this or, or vent or whatever it might be. That's very important. Yeah. And, and, and that's definitely, I think that's, that's usually, I feel like that's a lot of people's responses. Be like, as soon as I start talking about my situation, I'm going to get a lot of negative. A lot of people saying, Oh, just get a job. Oh, just do this, do that, you know, whatever. And it's like, yes, people are going to always say those things. Everybody's right. going to have some type of opinion on what's going on, but you are the creator. You are your own person and you dictate who you allow in your life just because they have an opinion doesn't mean you have to listen to them doesn't mean that you have right. to let that affect your tomorrow you choose who's in your life so if you have a, someone that you consider a decent friend and they're making like sub tweets about you or kind of pushing you off or whatever that should be a red flag to you being like maybe they wasn't the friend that i thought they was because here i am being real genuine going through a hard time and they're laughing at me without me knowing and it's like you you do have to kind yeah. of open up your eyes and, and understand the world around you yeah i think that that's important too and that's another thing that i mean that's another topic but it, it's uh professionalism on social media is super important and again i'm not throwing shade at anybody you know like you, it's, yeah, your, it's your socials mm -hmm. it's your socials you can do what you want yeah. with them you know what i mean but you got to remember that how you market yourself is how people see you Mm -hmm. and that's how brands see you that's how everything like i mean it, it's it's okay to again acknowledge your feelings and things like that but it's a different thing to like put them out yeah and, definitely like, make sense make things messy and things mm -hmm. like that and so again it's just not something i partake in i'm sure that there's benefits in some way or another to doing things like that and it's no shade you know like truly but I, it's just not something personally that I believe. Yeah, in. yeah, definitely. And, and the last thing I want to say before we, we switch topics, you know, uh, I understand that my podcast is new and, you know, I want to have a lot of guests on. I want to have a lot of different takes, a lot of different conversations and stuff. But ultimately, if there is anybody, whether it's from life's, you know, community, whether it's from my community, what, maybe you don't know us at all understand that just because you don't know us you can always reach out to us and that's that's the whole that's the whole point of it right like that's that's the gateway we both individually market ourselves as trying to make sure that we make people happy happy i can't speak today make people happy and give them something to kind of a little bit to look forward to and change up their day or maybe they just need to talk about it or something and just like i said it's so important that people take that first step and if you are watching this and for whatever reason you haven't take that first step and you don't have somebody to reach out to you are more than welcome to reach out to me or life you know that goes for anybody because it, it needs to be normalized it needs to be normalized and a lot of people make fun of it but you just got to stop listening to those type of people because they're not the ones that you should be messaging and reaching out to right everybody needs help at some point or another 
Yeah, definitely. So yeah, so that was a <laughs> that was a pretty fun topic to get into. Um, yeah, <clears throat> all right. So lastly, uh, on the topic of you and your gaming and stuff, um, I- I'll talk about Diablo in a second because I know <laughs> your mind is <laughs> imploded with Diablo stuff. But uh, ultimately, you know, pushing back in time, we talked about you know what got you into streaming and leading up to that. Um, as far as gaming goes, it doesn't really have to be the oldest game, but like, what is your favorite game? Something that kind of will always hold a place in your heart and really change your outlook on certain things. I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say Sly Cooper. I've not heard of that game. I'm gonna be straight up. You don't up. know that game? I don't game? know oh what that my game is. Goodness. <laughs> wow. How, how old was okay. you when you played that game? Oh, man, I was young. I, I think I was in maybe, maybe fourth or fifth grade. I don't even know. Actually, now that I think about it, like I, I don't even remember the time frame that that came out. But yeah, there's this like raccoon, and his whole premise is like you know like it's like band of thieves. The whole premise is that like you know like he goes around, basically <laughs> like steals a bunch of shit, and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff, and he has like a I think it's a turtle if I remember correctly. I don't know. I spent so many hours on this game, and I I absolutely loved it. And the whole premise of it was just like it, it was, it was fun, but it was like it was difficult for me at yeah. the time. And so like, I just remember I have so many fond memories like that and uh, Spyro. Mm, like I love Spyro. Just, Spyro was a sick game. Yeah, dude. It's just those two were those two were pretty great. I will say though, like impact <clears throat> wise. I didn't really play a whole lot that were like feely games. I guess. Right. So like, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't, like I can't. I can't think of one specifically. Sure. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but, you know. But I mean, yeah. it is great that you do. You do have you know genuine memories back then and stuff. Um, you know, mine, I think we've talked about this before, but mine's always going to be Final Fantasy 12. I've always loved Final Fantasy, been a huge series. Um, but you know, that, that impacted me a lot because I think that I was, I was either 10 or 11 years old. Um, I don't remember, but maybe I have told you the story. I, I'm not sure. We've had a lot of conversations. Um, but yeah. back in, <clears throat> back in 2010, um, my mom and dad ended up kind of getting in a, a little bit of financial struggle and, um, our utility got shut off for about three or four days. We had no electric in the house and we had a generator, um, that my dad kept running and yeah. still don't really know the full story, but regardless, he, you know, when the generator turned off, he, I don't know if it was like a blanket or a tarp or whatever he threw over and he left the garage doors closed. And unfortunately that ended up blowing up, um, started burning in our garage and didn't necessarily burn our house down. Our garage was ruined and, and a lot of things inside of it. Um, but the rest of the house was smoky. So obviously the house was unlivable. Um, yeah. but like literally the only thing that really survived in that house was my PlayStation 2 and a couple games that I had had on it, and Final Fantasy XII was one of those games. And I don't remember the specific day, but I, I think I was just going through games and just, you know, messing around, trying to find something to do, because around the time that my house burnt down, I had actually just started summer, I think. I don't know if I was in the the fourth or fifth grade, I'm not sure, somewhere's around there, and, and I just started yeah. summer, and, and, like, my whole summer was gone. Um, fortunately for my family, on the same plot of land that we was living, there was actually an old rundown trailer that was livable, just needed a bit maintained. It wasn't, like, nasty or nothing, just need cleaned up and swept and was dusty and stuff, and some of the windows fixed. Um, yeah. So that's where we ended up moving into, because we had nowhere else to go, but fortunately we did have that trailer, and so me and my dad had to share the same room, because it was... I think it was a, a three I, I think it was a three bedroom two or three bedroom house and we had me my brother my sister my mom and my dad um so me and my dad had to share the same room and I had like a little twin bed like that was laying on the floor like without a frame yeah. or nothing and I had this huge like 
silver big box screen TV that was like maybe you know 20 inches and I had my PS2 and you could see like you know burnt marks where it was like smoky and stuff and for whatever reason it was still playable and Final Fantasy uh, 12 is what I ended up playing and I just fell in love with that game I just I was really enjoyful it's kind of a it's a strategy type of game where you, yeah. everything's kind of a simulation you you know you build up your your characters in, in a sense it kind of is like Diablo in a way um, um, but it's more like it, it it it's kind of like I attack then you attack, but not like in like a, a sequence. It kind of just like you can both attack at the same time, but you dictate like during that fight rather than just run through by somebody and go on the next one. Um, yeah. And just everything about that game and and the license boards and the different com combinations of characters and and the espers that you could get. And there was like a big old uh, license board that you can get, and you have to defeat enemies to get what's called license points, which allows you to be able to equip certain armor and stuff you know the farther up you get so you can buy things um <clears throat> and so just playing that and kind of having that for my summer you know getting away from everything not thinking about the fire and not thinking about all the stuff that my little friends were thinking at the time and stuff and just how bad and mom and dad was struggling with everything you know it just really helped me get through that time so final final fantasy 12 will will always have a place in my heart and that's definitely my uh my favorite game for sure yeah absolutely dude i, I mean I appreciate you sharing that. That was really, that was really cool. Um, not cool that you're. No, I, I get it. <laughs> no, I but, get it. I get you know. it. Yeah, I got you. But yeah, I'm glad you were able to immerse yourself. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's always good. I mean, it's it's just one of those situations where like. You know, even you know, going up to now, like being adults or whatever, like you you have to understand, you know there may be situations that are, are super terrible or super unfortunate or something that you don't agree with. And, you know, and, and you know, my, my mindset and my view on the world, I, I don't complain, whatever is happening, I just do it and get it over with. And that's just something I, I would like to implement is not, not necessarily like saying like, don't complain about your problems, but just understand yeah. complaining about something you can't change. Why don't you look forward to something that has changed? And if nothing has changed, yeah. figure out, you know, what's, what kind of goal Goals you can achieve i mean clearly you're not you know your life's not over there's always some type of step something you can do or whatever yeah. however your bad your situation is it's all situation dependent but overall you know even fast forward and now there's going to be situations that are terrible and you're sitting here thinking about like man i don't know what i'm going to do and you just have to understand how to look on the bright side of things and, and just change your your positivity and your mood because your mental is is everything right yeah i mean if there's not an action you can take about it, then there's not something that you need to you know, hyper focus. So, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Definitely, like, that's that's something that I heard. Yeah, yeah. two years ago now, <laughs> I was on the ship, and uh, yeah, like <laughs> it was crazy. We so for those that don't know, I am in the Navy. Um, I'm currently active duty. Uh, so about three years ago, I was on a deployment, not to derail. I hope this is okay. No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> no, you're fine. I was on a deployment <laughs> and it was 2020 and we called it the COVID cruise because guess who deployed right at the start of COVID <laughs> all the way through no for 11 way. months. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was brutal. I mean, like there was other stuff that happened during that time, but mm -hmm. It was uh it was it was awful. Like we had three port calls. It was it was hard, genuinely. Like being at sea that long was terrible. Shoot. But we knew a couple of things. And it, like the the most important thing and the thing that our CO like mentioned the most was focus on the things you can control. What can you control right now? What can you do to make your life better right now? And we're on a ship, so that's pretty limited, right? Yeah. Like, we don't really got a whole I can, lot I can going look on. over and throw up and, and pretend that it's not happening. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, like, one of the things that we all kind of did and was pretty incredible was that our 350 or so people crew, we all got really tight, really close-knit, and we would, like, see each other's in the each each other in the uh hallway it's like the same thing it's just yeah. in a ship yeah um 
And so you'd see them and then you'd like give them a high five or you give them a hug or like just just little things like that, like mm -hmm. that you wouldn't think would have that much of an impact. But it does, because before that, you know, before that started happening, we had all gone like pretty much like touch deprived. Right. Like nobody. That's not a thing. You know, like people don't do that. And so like maybe with your close friends and stuff, I'm right. sure, but when it becomes frequent and like you just feel cared for because if it's happening in mass you feel cared for and then like you're talking to these people you're getting to know the intricate details of their life because yeah. you have nothing else to do <clears throat> yeah. you don't have a phone you don't have like the only thing you got are smokes dip and work that's it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was just, like, the main focus was, like, it was very focused on, like, control what you can control. And right now, what we can control and what can make our life better is that connectedness. And, that, I mean, that, like, drives back to our first point. It's just, like, being connected with people is important. It's huge. And I think it's just undersold right now, and it's really sad. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I kind of, you know, touch base on the top we were just talking about is, you know, connecting with people and, and taking that step, which it was kind of like, it was a happy medium because for you, it sounds like, you know, it was kind of like a forced environment in a way, not like in that way, but it's kind of like, what else are you going to do? Um, right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I can only imagine, <clears throat> you know, how big of a change that would be going from your normal everyday life before you was deployed of whatever you do, then going and basically having a second family and then you finally get home and get off that ship and your whole world is probably different you know not being yeah. in that lifestyle yeah. anymore like i'm sure you know like your mental had to be insane there oh dude it was that that was that was not a fun time um coming back from that deployment because you got to remember that we left right when covid started so the world that we left is not the world that we yeah. came back to and then on top of that we were gone for 11 months so in that time, your families and friends and everybody else are just continuing their life. Like it's, you're, it, they continue whether or not you're here. And it's hard for you to grasp that while you're out there. Yeah, and, and the same thing too, which I, I don't want to make, I don't want to like make this like emotional or nothing, but just like to really grasp for, you know, even for myself or maybe other people that are, you know, like interested on this topic, it's like, that's a lot not having no communication or whatever like you can't you can't look up in the sky and wait for pigeons to fly by with like notes and drop down in your hand like yeah. I, I could only imagine coming home and you know not being able to see people who you're used to seeing you know like that's that's got to be a whole different world knowing that you know regardless whether if it was your decision to be deployed or maybe it wasn't or, or whatever i mean i'm sure that just leaving and coming back to a different world and also the possibility of, of different people or, you know, some people may not be here no more. Like I could just only imagine, you know, and that, that's why I like mental health is so important because it's like yeah. those type of unexpected things like make a huge impact. And those things is what people don't talk about. And that's when you start seeing them kind of like derail and yeah. really get low. And so it, it's always important for whatever you're going through, no matter how bad the situation is to reach out to someone and, you know, and it's very simple. And I think this is something a lot of people need to hear. If you need to cry, you need to cry. It doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a lot of people need to understand. I must, I literally, I'm not even joking. I have a, a pretty, not bad. It's definitely getting better with my situation, you know, trying to just get out of a hole that I was in. I was recently unemployed for a little bit. It was just hard to find a job in my area. And I, I was crying on my boss yesterday. I don't care. Like, I'll talk about it. Everybody has money problems. Everybody has their own stuff going on. My stuff is no different than everybody else. So it's, right. it's good to normalize those feelings because if you can't get them across, either A, things won't get done, or B, it just you won't make you feel any better. And you know, it, it sounds, you know, to, to some people, it may be like, oh, like crimes for losers or whatever. But it's like, if that's what you have to do to put a smile on your face or to be like, okay, and breathe a little bit, that's what you have to do. And I, I think that's the biggest thing that's not normalized. And that's why there's so much controversy, because there's a lot of people that don't want to show their emotions because they're so fixated on building this, like, circle, yeah, like, wall like, around curious. themselves. So I think it's very important to to normalize mental health and mental awareness of what's going on and how you're feeling. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, 
So I actually just did kind of what you you like you just alluded <laughs> to there. Like I definitely just did Welcome that to Lace Life. So I I I didn't even realize that I was doing it, guys. Like that's like that's the crazy part about it. Is like it's become so ingrained and it's so common now that like you don't even recognize when you're hiding it. Like and you're tucking some feelings away and stuff. So when I said other things that happened on that deployment, on that deployment my mom passed away. Oh yeah. So I wasn't going to go there. You know what I mean? Like, I, like it didn't even register. It was just like, oh yeah, other things happen. Man. Whatever. And then like I was just like moving on. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. But like, I, you know, like that's it sucked. <laughs> like, but these things, like things happen, and they're out of your control, and there's not a whole lot you can do all the time. But just because yes, that happened, nothing can change it. That doesn't mean that your feelings about it change at all. Like, it still sucks. It's okay to say, shit, this sucks, and then mm. feel through that. Obviously, don't stay there too long, but, like, feel through it. You know what I mean? And then once you have a plan of action of, like, okay, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to work on, or whatever it might be, on things you can control, focus those still acknowledge those feelings because they're still going to be there. It's, they never go away. You just learn to live with it. But, you know, things like things happen. And yeah. it's okay to acknowledge and say, hey, shit, this sucks. Yeah, definitely. And and I remember, you know, me and you had had a, a few talks about your wonderful mother, you know, before I yeah. didn't. This is a little bit new information because I didn't know, you know, that it happened yeah. around that. But obviously, you know, obviously, you know, I appreciate you sharing with that and the podcast. You know, it's a very touchy yeah, topic and, and you're very strong for talking about that kind of stuff. I could only imagine talking about my own mom that way. You know, it's it's tough. It's it's, it's, an, it's a it's topic you don't want to talk about. I, I, I completely understand. Um but yeah, I mean, that's, that's just, the world is so real and you just have to open up and understand that, you know, no matter how bad something is, it could just always be worse. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very important to have people to reach out to and stuff. And I actually mm -hmm. think oddly enough, when, when me and you really started talking, I think it actually was around that time. Cause I remember some of our conversations, cause you actually ended up reaching out to me and was like, man, like I need somebody to talk to. And yeah. you, in a sense, cause you know, my, I'm not like, I'm not trying to say this in like a, a, a cocky way or nothing, but like my life was okay. And I'm not like yeah. saying like anything like that, but it's like, no, I like I was, I was fine and I was content with everything that's going on. And then you was having struggles. So it's like, I'm, I'm happy, but I'm not happy that you had to take that first step. Cause it's like, I didn't really have nothing to talk about cause everything was okay. And you know, I, I was, you know, after we had that conversation and stuff yeah. like well over a year ago, like it was an awesome genuine conversation. And, and again, it goes mm -hmm. back to those feelings. Like people don't want to say like, man, like I enjoyed that conversation. I really needed to, to say that off my chest. Like people don't normalize that. And just, it's just the best way that I can put it is for people that's listening and thinks that that sounds stupid or, or dumb for it, it, if you are there are people like that experience it for the first time get something off your chest that you yeah. want to and you haven't and then come back to this podcast and tell me how you feel because it's so important i can't i can't explain it enough for you to understand if there is anybody that's still like that stupid whatever when you experience it you will understand that that is just just a, a feeling you just can't buy it you, right. just, you can't put a price on it no absolutely uh connectedness dude it's i i feel like a lot of people get let down and that's why they take that mindset that they get um they get let down because they try to open up and then they just think like oh nobody cares it's like dude a lot of people care a lot of people care about you and more people than you are even aware of care about you I yeah can, i can promise you that yeah definitely so yeah it's, just reach out to somebody if you're one of those people if you're watching this reach out i don't care if it's me i don't care if it's Leif. i don't care if it's some stranger that's sitting on the curb that's got nothing else better to do talk to somebody i know it's weird i know it's socially awkward but if that's what you need to do to get better do it 
get out of your comfort zone because it's tomorrow's not going to change if you don't do something about it today um so yeah we've we've talked a ton about yeah. uh mental health and stuff man i i did not i, I just locked my phone I, ha I have all my questions on my phone by the way um yeah and I just I just kind of ignored him because you know we kind of took this a different toll, which is yeah it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, but that's that's just the last thing I want to say on that topic is if you're going through something, whoever it is, please reach out to somebody. Um, but yeah, anyways, back towards like uh, your favorite yeah. game and all this stuff. Um, I wanted to talk <laughs> about Diablo. I wanted to get a, a few opinions on how how you're locking Diablo and why is it so interesting to you? I mean, I I believe you was literally playing it before we even <laughs> before we even started talking, right? Yeah, <laughs> I was. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been I've been grinding so hard on it. All right, so. Diablo 4 is absolutely insane. They have a fantastic story campaign. It seems like you can do it. I don't know for sure, but you can do them out of order. So you can go through Act 1 and go to, like, Act 4 and do all of these things. But you have to, or actually, no. It's probably Act 1 through Act 3. Mm -hmm. So Act 1 through Act 3, you can start anywhere in there, and then you can do all of them. But you have to do all of them in order to progress. And so... Yeah, like they just did a really good job in the, in the in the story. Uh, they made pretty much every character and all the cutscenes and all the like main characters in the story like relatable, and they had like a story that you could follow. Even like the big bad, like you kind of get to a point where you're just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I kind of get it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's kind of weird because you know, like Lilith's a whole ass demon. <laughs> Like, so oh, how do you wow. how do you compare you know with everything that's going on in Diablo right now you know to use playing tons of Valorant you know use trying to get your ranking yeah. with Valorant and stuff playing a couple other games you know Modern Warfare sometimes and I can't remember mm -hmm. usually every time I, I pop in your stream you're usually on uh, Valorant for the most part but you know past tense yeah. before Diablo um, so how do you, how do you kind of you know compare this experience that you're feeling right now with Diablo versus coming home every day and feeling like you're playing Valorant 9 to 5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Valorant's a great game too. I just uh you, for me it lost a little bit of the allure mainly because like you're so dependent on everybody else on your team. Like you 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 need to work together as a team. And if you have one guy that's like screaming into his mic or you know like yeah. being misogynistic because mm -hmm. there's a female on your team yeah what have you like just being offensive for the sake of being offensive it's like all right this is exhausting and it seemed to be happening more and more as it progressed definitely so that was disappointing um and so <laughs> that said i mean like there's not really a story with valorant there is a story but it's not really like kind of pushed and there's no like pve or anything like right. that and so for diablo it's like they do have that component of you can play in a group and then you're not as dependent on everybody else but you still are dependent on them mm -hmm. if you're in a group because it like scales the enemies and things right. like that. and so they also have the story telling aspect they have the variety too um beyond skins and i think that that was that was the main thing is like I, I've always like loved MMOs. I thought that they were really fun. Um, old school RuneScape is where I started. I ended up moving on to World of Warcraft for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then uh, now I'm on Diablo and let me let me just say it's it's a great game. I think you guys should get it yeah. if you don't have it. Yeah, definitely. I mean it's it's always nice to have that genuine experience with a game and stuff and, and that's kind of you know, the point where I'm at right now. Like I'm I'm a little stuck. Like I'm I'm kinda back to my rust plays, like I'm getting kind of bored of Modern Warfare sniping. Clearly, they're not making some good decisions right now. There's a lot of controversy going on. And yeah. and overall, like, there's just not tournaments being hosted. And, then, you know, I'm not really a competitive person, but that is what I enjoyed is competing with players that was better than me and trying to prove myself and, and win those games and stuff and just kind of do those things. And it's just not happening anymore. And so, like, Rust has always kind of been the, the genuine go-to game. It's usually a, a free-time yeah. game that I would usually go to. So that's kind of what I'm playing right now but i mean realistically that's that's kind of a part of the reason why i'm doing this podcast now because i don't really have specific gaming intentions you know 
I don't have like a yeah. next step. I don't have a, this is a stream tomorrow. This is what I'm excited for. Like, I don't have that. And so having this podcast kind of makes me flip the book and, you know, get a new chapter and, and go from there and stuff. So it's, it's a happy medium. Uh, I love gaming. I'll always game regardless of whatever I end up doing. Um, but it is nice to kind of chill out a little bit and not have to worry about, trying my best to entertain viewers with my crazy snipes or with great Valorant gameplay or getting a fucking M2 with a rock on Russ, you know, like not having yeah. to go to certain links to impress people. Now I can just kind of sit back and relax and voice my opinions and hopefully others agree and, and maybe it makes them feel better. Maybe it's just a nice listen. Maybe you're just eating some food and, and just chilling out, you know, that would be sick. Um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. So, I, I mean, there's a couple other topics I, I wanted to talk about, but we're already at about 40 minutes, which is insane. The fact oh that goodness. we've been able okay. to, you know, we've been able to talk this long. So I'm not really too worried about it. Most, it wasn't like super, super important. And I mainly wanted to focus um, on you, obviously, as a guest. Again, I appreciate you for coming by. Um, obviously, yeah, mental absolutely. health and everything. I'm super glad that our first episode, we can try to normalize for people like that if you're going through something. And hopefully they can relate to things that, you know, I've went through or things that you've went through or family passings or, or whatever it is, you know, relate that yeah. everybody has somewhat of the same kind of stuff going on. So it's normal to talk about it and you're not indifferent than anybody else. You just have to use them as a source and as an outlet to, you know, having your voice heard and not take it in the way of like, listen to me, take it in the way like, hey, like, will you listen? Like, there's just, there's a completely yeah. different way, you know, to take that and to go in those steps. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're basically... I'm going to finish up here. I mean, the last question um, that I have, obviously, with Leif, all of his links and everything will be in the description below. Um, you can catch him streaming. Um, do you have a certain stream schedule or anything that you usually do? Yeah, so because I'm in the Navy, yeah. my schedule doesn't come out until the day before every single yeah. So, gotcha. It's kind of a time. is there is there a norm is there a normalized time that if that you're usually around? Yeah. So, well, no, because <laughs> <laughs> we have like a days, mids, and a nights. And so just just, just stay tuned. Get, go on Twitter, him. follow him, put his noties on, and and you know if you want to watch him, just stay tuned. Sadly, yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any? Uh, that's the last question I want to ask. Do you have any plans coming up? I've seen obviously on your uh, on your channel on Twitch for right now. I mean, kick is a whole another conversation for another day. Uh, maybe yeah. a part two to this podcast. I don't know if people want to see you again or whatever. I mean, I would be down yeah. to do it back to back. I wouldn't care. You know, I don't mind. It's my podcast, so it's you know <laughs> it's <mine>. <laughs> figure it <laughs> figure it out. Um, but I've seen that you uh, are raising up channel points for a scary game and stuff. So what kind of like plans and stuff do yeah. you have coming up for yourself? So I was, all right. So like the community that comes into my chat decided <laughs> that they wanted me to play a scary game. Now I jump in Valorant. Okay. So <laughs> terrible idea, but we're going to do it because why not? You know, I don't, I don't see a point in not, in not doing it. Yeah. Uh, but I was thinking about doing a demonologist or uh, even Oh, there was a new game. I think it'd be a lot of fun to play with people. Mm. Uh, I can't remember. We talked about it a little bit. Outlast Trials? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, that just that'd, clicked that'd in my head. <laughs> That'd be something that I definitely yeah I I definitely I definitely wouldn't mind if I could you know buy the game in the next week or so I think it's like thirty dollars for the game which does stink a little bit but it's definitely watching just I, I games that like I feel like I'm gonna be really interested in I try to watch like the bare minimum just enough to yeah. understand what's going on and then I exit out and be like okay because I don't want spoilers I don't want to like really know that much because then it ruins the whole factor of it um yeah so yeah I mean I mean who knows maybe maybe your first scary game is, is a duo stream you know maybe we'll play out last trials or something I'm I don't know um, but yeah, other than that, you know, like I said, guys, links in the description below, go check Leif out. He is a wonderful human being. Um, I appreciate you so much for coming by. Is there any last words that you have for anybody watching anything you want them to know or anything that you would want to say or anything? Um, not particularly just, uh, thank you for being you. Thanks for tuning <laughs> in. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us and 
I appreciate you bringing me in here, dude. Yeah, it means a lot to yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. Truly. I mean, it's, you know, same same exact thing for me, man. Especially not even the fact of you just being a guest, but your your timely fashion, especially with your schedule changing daily. It's just either good luck or, or just crazy how both of our schedules align to to make this happen. Um, and so yeah, but I just I appreciate you being here. Anybody that's watching, please leave comments down below if there's anybody that you would like to see on future podcasts. If maybe you want a part two of conversations with was going to talk about maybe you like this i, I don't know um i don't know <laughs> what's going to happen with this channel i don't know what i'm going to do i don't know all about it um i'm just going to post this see how it goes we may go into doing live soon i'm just i want to start out slow i don't want to go and rush anything too crazy yet because i don't want to dig a hole deeper than i'm expecting to dig um but yeah i appreciate you all hanging out Leif. thank you so much for coming by man i love you man uh, it's Easy been a blast. Again, it's been a blast having you here. Uh, normalize mental health. If you're going through something, please, 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 please reach out to somebody. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Subscribe, notifications on, and we'll see you later.